Welcome everybody to On Point Talk, the Carlette Christmas Show. Our guest this morning is no stranger to central Louisiana and really to America. He is, we call him America's coach. He is a living legend and we're super excited to welcome back to On Point Talk, Coach Charles Smith. He is Peabody Magnet High School's winningest coach and um, he's got a list of accolades. He's been an educator for more than five decades, the head coach for over four decades. He's been a district champion for more than three decades, 36 years to be exact, and he's had over 27 state tournament appearances. He's won the ESPN National Coach of the Year, Louisiana State Coach of the Year, not once, not twice, not three times, but six times and counting. He's coached the Michael Jordan All-Star Game. He's coached the Louisiana All-Star Game four times, the McDonald's All-Star American Games, and then we'll tell you a little bit later in the show about some of his biggest, <laughs> biggest accolades. We simply call you, Coach, a living legend right here in our own backyard. Thank you so much, and thank you for having me. Just congratulations. I mean, every time uh, we sit right here, <laughs> and we talk, I always say, is there anything else that you can do? Have you said that to yourself? What else, what else could I do? Not really. Uh, again, thanks for having me. Uh, you know, I, I just, I'm a true believer that God has blessed me with a talent. And uh, he has set forth uh, uh, goals and, and uh, things for me to do. And, and he, I've been blessed with good help. And, uh, and I've been able to do that. I've been able to relate to kids, like you said, over, uh, over 50 years. And there has been a great change in the kids from when I started teaching in 1971 up until 2024. But I, I say again, uh, God has blessed me to be able to you know, deal with uh, you know, our children of today. And so 50 years ago, is in no comparison to where we are Correct. today. How have you been so relatable? Well, I, I think that I've accepted the change. I have not uh, uh, more or less tried to fight the change. Mm -hmm. uh, I have accepted it and I have adjusted my, now I haven't changed uh, my way of doing things, but I have accepted the change. Uh, give me for an example, when I started teaching in uh, 1971, there was still a strict uh, uh, code of discipline. And uh, the children adhered to that. Not only the children, uh, the teachers, uh, even the parents mm -hmm. adhered to that. But now we're in a generation where, uh, you know, more or less, uh, you know, you do it your way. You know, whatever you think is best, you do that. And, uh, and I've been able to, uh, you know, to adjust to that line of thinking. And so when you, Look at today's kids. How have you been able to, be, before we talk about, and, and we're going to go into all of the inductions okay. into the Hall of Fames that you've been inducted into, but how have you been able to educate kids? Because before you can even create right. athletes, you have Correct. to be able to Correct. create students. Right. Well, over my career, I've always believed deep in my heart that kids want to learn. I mean, that's human nature. Uh, human nature, you want to learn. Now, you can learn good things or you can learn bad things, but you want to learn. And it's my job as a teacher to present it in a way that is attractive and that's something that you want to do. And, and I've been able to do that. I've been able, I teach mathematics and I've been able to uh, teach it uh, in a way that uh, kids believe that they can learn it. It's, it's a different, it's different from what I've been accustomed to. And I've always uh, tried to present the material in a way that each child, if I got 30 kids in a class, that 30 kids believe that they can learn it. I know it's difficult for some, and some have to put in more time. Mm -hmm. But it's my job as a teacher uh, to be able to determine that. Now, math has, has, has been nuanced in so many ways where, right. you know, sometimes I feel like just to teach our, our second right. graders, you got to go back right. to, to college to learn. How have you been able to change with all of the the changes in right. just in math. Right, in math alone, you have correct. Uh, you are correct about uh, the changes, and the changes I've, I've said has always been to uh, more or less please the public. But you're still doing the basics. I, I don't, I don't know what how you approach it, 
Uh, one year we came in uh, with the career ed. I mean, we were looking at the career ed. Then one year we came in with uh, uh, the, the business aspect. Uh, one year we came in with the computer aspect of it. But even at all of that, you still have to uh, teach the basics. And that's what I've been able to do uh, in, in whatever course that I teach. I, I've been able to uh, start with the basics. I teach the basics and I make sure the kids understand the basic. And then we go from there to the higher level uh, of math and the critical thinking. Mm -hmm. And what, what drives you, Coach? You know, you could have 20 years ago, you could have said, look, I've done just about everything that there is to do. I have earned every honor. I have been lauded and respected, not just in our state, but in our nation. Right. What keeps you going? Well, I'm not doing it for personal gains or for myself. As I said before, I'm, I'm doing it for the student. And I feel that as long as I'm effective, uh, getting the knowledge and the information out to the student, uh, you know, I, I feel, and then my health, of course, uh, I've been blessed with good health, and I tell people all the time, they say, well, do you work out, do you train? I say, not really. Uh, my dad uh, passed away last year at 99 years of age, and then my mother passed away at 92. So I would probably tell people that it's in my genes. Uh, you know, um, would I live that long? I don't know. But I'm in good health, and I feel good, and I feel that as long as I'm in good health and I can relate to the students and help them become uh, productive members of society, then I would like to continue to do that. Absolutely. We're going to take a break here, but when we come back, we'll have more of our living legend, Coach Charles Smith. He is uh, one of the winningest coaches in America. Stay with us. We're back with more right after this. Welcome back, everybody, to On Point Talk, the Carlette Christmas Show. Our guest this morning is what I call, and the only way that you can describe him, is a living legend. He has had the opportunity over 50 years and counting to coach countless young men to affect their lives. But in so doing, he's created a culture of excellence. And he has so many accomplishments, and we'll talk about him uh, during this hour. I'm talking about Coach Charles Smith. Peabody Magnet High School, those war horses, he just keeps on winning. And Coach, during the break, I think it's important to note for this conversation, you are probably the only black coach in America, not just in our state, but in America, to, to be so decorated. And we really can't move past that because you have other coaches that are doing similar things, but, but the situations are different. Talk about that. Well, uh, you're correct there. Uh, I've been really fortunate enough to be at Peabody High School. Uh, and that happened, uh, you know, a long uh, time ago uh, when I started teaching in Rapids Parish. I came in with the integration uh, part of the school. And I started off at Slocum High School. I had a chance to coach and teach uh, former Mayor Clarence Fields of Pineville. Wow. He, was, he and his wife were my first students. And, and when the school merged with integration, we moved over to Pineville High School. And at Slocum, I was assistant basketball coach to Mr. George White. But when we moved over to Pineville High School, there were no coaching positions open. So I had to go in as a regular classroom teacher. And, uh, you know, did a, hey, I do what I do, I teach. Mm -hmm. And two, at two years in, uh, a position came open at Peabody for an assistant basketball coach. That was in 1975, mm -hmm. and I transferred over to Peabody as an assistant coach to Mr. Ernest Bowman. Wow. And uh, we stayed there, and, uh, and that's how it all began. Mm -hmm. He retired in 1985, and I took over as head coach. So I was 10 years as an assistant. And great head coach. I learned a lot from Mr. Bowman. And in 1985, I took over as head coach. And, you know, everything seemed to fall in place after that. And, and the rest is history. <laughs> and so in building this dynasty, because that's indeed what it is, what, what's the buy-in? This is what we were talking about among ourselves when we were preparing for, for this conversation. What is the buy-in? Because you hear Dawn Staley and her players, right. um, the Gamecocks, uh, 
women's national championship in, in, in this season. Uh, you, you hear all of her players talk about the buy-in. What, what is that buy-in? Well, for me, the buy-in is letting the kids know this is your team. You know, this is your team. And what you put into it is what you're going to get out of. It's, it's almost like an investment. And number one, I asked them, uh, do you want to play college basketball? That's as a freshman. And of course, all the answers are yes. Well, you got to invest. You got to put the time in, not only on the basketball court, but in the classroom also. And I tell them all the time, and this is my motto, good things happen to good people. So what I'm requiring you to do is to be a good person on and off the court. Don't just be a great basketball player, but also be a great individual, character. That's very, very important to me. So that has been handed down uh, from 1985 when I started, because we did struggle because I was trying to get the kids to buy into that. But once they did, in 1991, we won our first state championship. And then those young men realized what the plan was. And then they continued to come back and they instilled in the younger boys behind them hey, Coach Smith knows what he's talking about, he knows what he's doing, because look at my success. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, through what I've been able to accomplish, that you can accomplish the same thing if you just listen. So it's sort of a trickle down from, That's correct. from the previous players and then they come in That's or correct. come back. That's correct. So has there ever been a team or a year in all of these decades that you felt that they're not buying in? Not really, uh, because I, I, I try to, and kids usually come to me that buy into that philosophy. Uh, they'll come and they say, oh no, I can't do this. I can't do the training, or I can't handle the discipline. So they'll eventually, you know, walk away from it. Really? But the kids that stay, they said, hey, you know, I'm buying into what coach said. I, I know my situation where I'm coming from. I think coach could help me do better and get to a better situation. So they continue to come in and they work, and, and, and believe me, I mean, our training is, is very strenuous. And, and I try to train them on a level that prepares them for college. And most of my guys, when they go to college, they do well because they have been trained in high school to do that. Not only on the basketball court, but in the classroom also, because I demand they come to school every day. And really? attend class every day. So when they get to college, you know, that habit has already been formed. Mm -hmm. So early on, Coach, did you start looking at college training programs to see what the expectation would be for these seniors that would go on to college? Well, I knew the level because I played <laughs> uh, college baseball myself and I knew the level of training that I had to put in in order to perform uh, at, at, in college baseball. Mm -hmm. And I knew basketball is, is much more uh, demanding than baseball. You know, for the conditioning. So I made sure that we were in tip-top condition. I made sure that we were fundamentally sound because in baseball you got to be able to feel the ball, you got to be able to hit the ball. Uh, so basketball, the same thing. You got to be able to uh, pass, dribble, shoot. So I stressed fundamentals. Mm -hmm. And then once we stressed the fundamentals and the conditioning, then we worked together as a team. Mm -hmm. and, and of course, you know, you hear the old is there's no I in team. So they all buy in to, t as a, to a team. And then from that, we win. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, everyone <laughs> wants to be a winner. <laughs> and so when you look at, and I know you, you, you've you been courtside at professional games, uh, you've been at the, the championships, the semifinals, March Madness. Correct. When you look at a team like Dawn Staley, right, and she's got no starters Correct. coming back, mm -hmm. and nobody in, in the basketball world thinks that they have a chance. Right. How do you create a buy-in when you don't have the team that you would hope for? Well, the college is a lot different now and different from high school. You know, high school, more or less, I take the kids that come into the program. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're zoned to Peabody, then they come in. And of course, in Arapahoe Parish, we have open enrollment. So they can come in through open enrollment, but there are guidelines. But in college, you know, you go out and recruit the best players. Mm -hmm. And you recruit those kids that fit into your program. I have to get kids and then get them to buy into my program. But she can go out there, not even within the United States, she can go overseas and get players. So uh, her tradition is going to continue because she's doing two things. She's winning, she's winning national championships, and she's sending girls on to the WNBA. Mm -hmm. So it won't be a problem with the transfer portal as mm -hmm. it is now for her to get. 
what do you think about the transfer portal? And are you talking to your kids about what that looks like? As a coach in the generation that I came out of, I don't particularly care for it. And the reason being because I'm the type of coach that I put the time in. I bring a kid in as a freshman, ninth grader, and we're going to develop his skills, ninth grade, 10th grade. And hopefully by the 11th grade, he's mastered those skills. And 11th and 12th grade, he becomes a starter. And, and then we keep the winning condition going. But in college now, you can't do that. You can take a kid as a freshman and develop him, and he might, at the end of the freshman year, say, look, I'm transferring out of here to another school. So it makes it difficult for coaches of my generation, Coach K that was at Duke, right. uh, th those type of coaches, to deal with that. But the modern coaches, they think more or less like the NBA. You know, in the NBA, you can trade and get the guys that you want. So mm -hmm. that's basically what college has turned into. Mm -hmm. But but don't you think it's like what you said, like how you have been able to change, you know, from 50 years ago and, and still be relevant with the kids? Right. Don't you think that coaches kind of have to have that mentality now on the collegiate level? Yeah, they, they can, but uh, that's starting to change because you look at the NIL, it's about money now. Right. The college players don't have to wait now till a senior year or, you know, to get drafted into the NBA. They can get the NIL deals now and make millions of dollars while they're playing college basketball. Right, and for people who don't know what the NIL is, tell us what that is. Uh, that's name, image, and likeness. Mm -hmm. So in the old days, the colleges would get money for these boys and girls playing basketball on TV, selling T-shirts and other type of, all that money would go to the school, to right. the college. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, I agree with that, that, that these kids need to get more. When I was in college, they used to call it laundry money. <laughs> <laughs> that means I would get enough money to buy, you know, a little food mm -hmm. and to wash my clothes, sure. they call it. But uh, and that was like maybe $50 a month or something like that. But $50 a month compared now to $1.5 million or $2 million that these young, that these people, young uh, people get now is, 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 is astronomical, really. Mm -hmm. What do you think about um, kids now being paid for their name and, and their image and their likeness as opposed to just getting scholarships and all the controversy that went on mm -hmm, with, mm -hmm. you know, alumni paying the kids? Right. What, do you, what do you think about that? Well, you know, uh, to be uh, factual, that was going on. You know, the, the bigger schools were getting the uh, uh, top-notch players right. because they – uh, you know, had the benefit. Because they were paying them <laughs> under the table, but <laughs> but nobody really knew about yeah. it, but everybody knew about it. Yeah, but that's true. But so now it opens up to all the schools. Mm -hmm. You know, you saw schools in the last couple of years who never ever been in the NCAA tournament mm -hmm. who are now getting in because they can get top-notch players mm -hmm. because of the NIL deal. Do you think that drives now high school kids to want to go play Division I um, basketball? Well, I don't, I don't know, and, 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 and we were talking earlier about the, today's students and kids live in the moment. Right. I don't know if they really think about that, you know, and what I'm saying is I think they put the time in and the effort to just be good right now. Mm. You know, they don't think about the future. I have to put this extra work in. I have to do a, a little bit more in practice. I have to run a few more wind sprints. I have to do a little bit more of that. And I think that the kids today are kind of losing that. And if you are not a gifted athlete, mm -hmm. I don't think that uh, that comes into play, NIL deals and, and things really? of that sort. Even right. with how it's really just swept the nation. I'm not saying they don't want that, mm -hmm. but I'm saying that I don't know if they're willing to put the time in to get that. And so one of the things that you're doing is, is, is preparing them, not only uh, physically, but, but academically. And so how do you begin to change the mindset for kids, especially who will be first generation right. college students? Right. That's a good question. That's a good question. And I think that question needs to be answered across the board. Uh, it's, what do you it's, mean across the board? Okay. Number one is, uh, first thing, the home. Mm -hmm. You know, what is the home doing to prepare their children outside the home? Can a home that really doesn't understand education, right? Because I, if I never went to college, 
I'm not sure that I can propel you to that. Now, mm -hmm. some parents can, mm -hmm. but, but I can't really give you what I don't have. Right. So it's going to probably be more up to the Coach Smiths of the world, mm -hmm. the Mr. Um, Stewarts of the world, you know, the, right. the faculty, the staff who really, I mean, at Peabody, there is, there is a caring uh, at that school that, that I, I have not really seen in many schools. Correct. And you're absolutely right. Uh, Mr. Stewart, uh, he, the principal at Peabody, uh, he believes in a spirit of excellence. And that's on a daily basis. And he counsels with these kids individually. You know, it's not that you, he has counselors, he has uh, assistant principals, but if the situation warrants it, he will sit down and talk to those kids as the principal. Mm -hmm. You know, and that means a lot. Yeah. If you get the attention of the principal, not just in bad situations, but uh, as getting advice or just saying, hey, just sit down and let me listen to, to your story, what you, what, you, what you have to say. But uh, you're absolutely correct there about the parents, uh, the communities, and even the church. You right. know, all of that has diminished. The, the family concept has diminished. Because uh, that started years before when we started with the TV dinners and all that. We no longer sit around the, 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 the dining room table right. and have meals and share our thoughts and ideas and get to know one another. But now it's, 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 it's separate. We, the children now have their own room. Mm -hmm. You know, I grew up in a situation where uh, <laughs> it was five or six of us in one room. Right. You know, so we got to know each other, you know. And now they're almost like individuals. And, 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 and it's hard. It's hard. And how are we going to get back to that? We have to get back to the family, number one, mm -hmm. uh, discipline in the home. We have to get back to the schools. That means we have to demand that our kids are performing, not just going to school, but performing in the schools. And then some kind of way we have to get back to the church. Uh, I know we all over the place now with church, <clears throat> excuse me, meaning that I can't impose my will on you for as your uh, Christianity or religion, you know, so that's kind of becoming a situation where, but in our day, it was, we were basically focusing on uh, God and love your brother. Mm -hmm. You know, that's what I grew up under. Right. You know, belief in God and then love for one another. And uh, that's kind of diminished on both ends. Right. You know, God now has become material things. Yeah. You know. Uh, our neighbor is getting farther and farther away, mm -hmm. <laughs> if, wow. you, if you get understand that. Absolutely. And as we jump toward the excellence that you have created uh, and this dynasty over, over these 50 plus years, really 53 years and counting, um, 1,200 plus wins, um, Undefeated seasons, 41 and, and, and 0 twice. Um, done a documentary, Chasing a Thousand Wins. And authored a book, inducted into the Coaches Hall of Fame, Louisiana Sports Hall of Fame, National Coaches Hall of Fame. And then the biggest and the most recent Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame. How do you, how do you process all of that? Well, uh, as I said earlier, I, I think all of this is a blessing from God. And, uh, and I've been able to carry it out, you know, be able to uh, carry out his wishes. And again, it's all about the students. I never started out in 1985 that I would accomplish all of this. You know, it's no way, I, I mean, you, I can't even imagine uh, the things that, and I say we, because without the kids, I wouldn't have been able to accomplish this. So I give them uh, much credit. I also give credit to my family, my wife, with the long hours uh, that she had to raise my, our two kids, you know, without, without, with me practicing. And then now with my grandkids, I got to kind of put time in with them. But it, it, it's been a blessing, and I've been blessed to be able to get kids over a long period of time to buy in to what I'm trying to do, and that's to make you a better person. And if you do that, if I can do that, we're going to win basketball games. We're going to even win championship because it's all about 
your performance. It's all about how you feel about what you're doing, not about me as a coach. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't say, well, we won because coach uh, drew up that play. Coach, I tell them all the time, coach does not shoot free throws. Coach does not get rebound. <laughs> the players have to do that. And, and it was a wonderful feeling. This is one of the years that I really didn't think that we could win a state championship. Why? Well, I didn't think we had the pieces. And what I mean by that is I, don't, I didn't think we had uh, the Division I players, which I've been having in the past, guys to go to UConn, Alabama, uh, USC, Oklahoma State. I didn't think we had NBA players like Markel Brown, who went to the Brooklyn Nets, or Paul Thompson, who went to the team. I didn't think we had those type of players. And, uh, and I've found over my career, we need those kind of guys in order to excel. But this group of guys, and at the end of the game, the coach said, why are you crying? Because I felt that these were overachievers. And they overachieved because of the work they put in. Mm -hmm. They were willing to shoot the 30 minutes or hour free throws after practice. They were willing to put up with coach uh, fussing, uh, <laughs> telling him to do better, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to run uh, five minutes longer. So I just became over overwhelmed uh, with, with, with joy for what these kids have accomplished. And they're a great group of kids. And so do you kind of liken it to to Coach Staley when when she just was overcome? Because <laughs> yes. It, and, and do you think, Coach, that a lot of people, especially the basketball experts and people who really know the game, you know, they were saying, you know, they wanted to talk to her on, a, on another level. Mm -hmm. And she stopped in that moment, just as you've said um, here, nobody but God. That's right. Talk That's about right. How, how God plays into, into the bigger right. scheme of basketball. Right. Uh, you know, I've always, uh, in my classroom, on the basketball court, in my family, in my life, I've always put God first because I know there's a limit to what I can do. I can only do so much. Like, I have no control over my health. You know, all I can do is make sure I eat right and do the proper thing. But God is in control of that. Mm -hmm. You know, with, uh, with the Bible verse says, what, our days are numbered. Right. Uh, you know, so I have no idea. But I do know that he's given me the help to live it fully. Mm -hmm. Whatever those numbers are, that whatever those days are, uh, he's provided me with the help to do that. And uh, he provided me with a great family. My wife, my two kids, Dr. Ross, uh, which works at Southern University in New Orleans. My son, which is my associate head coach, Kedrick Smith. Uh, really, he does all the X's and the O's because he played college basketball mm -hmm. at, at North Carolina Charlotte. So he knows the more finer points of the game. But I know kids because I've been working with them for 53 years. So I know that part of it. I know what they capable of doing, and sure. I try to get that out of them. How do you think the three-point shot has changed, <laughs> changed the game where everybody wants? Well, and, you know, and really Steph Curry. Yeah. It, 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 well, you could take it back to Larry Bird. Correct. But, but Steph Curry was sort of the, the innovator of it. How do you think that that has really changed the game? It, it has. It's opened up the game. Uh, you know, I, I, I was... I started off in an era where you played basketball from the inside out, meaning that we played with the post guys. Right. You, we had guys like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Akeem Olajuwon, mm -hmm. uh, Shaq, Shaquille mm -hmm. O'Neal. Daryl Dawkins. The game, that's right. <laughs> uh, yes, chocolate thunder. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but yes, you are correct. The game, when I started, was in the, what we call in the paint. Right. So you had to have a strong uh, post guy. Right. So when they put the three point line in, now it changed. Now it spreads your defense out. Mm -hmm. So now you have to have guys who go out and guard. So guys like Kareem Abdul Jabbar, Shaquille O'Neal would have trouble now playing because nobody could guard them on the post, but they can't guard anybody on the perimeter. Right. So that's how the game has changed. And Steph Curry has just taken it to another level. Mm -hmm. But that's because he put the time in. You know, everybody's saying, well, he can shoot. But nobody's going to tell you that he shoot a thousand three point shots per day, mm -hmm. or uh, two thousand three point shots per day. Right. You know the wow. generate the now generation think it just happens, mm -hmm. but it doesn't happen. These guys are good because they put the time in. And so, are you seeing kids 
on the high school level that really want to be the next Steph Curry, that they want to put that time in so that they can shoot, not just at the three-point line, right. but, but beyond. Right. They want to, but I don't know that they want to put the time in. Mm -hmm. You know, as I say, we're in our generation now. Everything is microwave, I call it. Right. Uh, most of the kids can't put their cell phone down now to, to shoot a thousand. But a thousand I've, been, I've been to you guys at school. And I see at lunchtime that there are no cell phones. That's correct. That's correct. So Mr. Stewart has policies in place where we try to limit uh, the, the students' uh, access to cell phones. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know you get problems with that because, uh, you know, a lot of people want their kids to have their phones and for whatever reason, most say it's for safety, but, you know, <laughs> and, you know, safety. But uh, you're, you're correct. The cell phone has changed. Just like Steph Curry has changed the three-point shot, the cell phone has changed our whole uh, way of life or living, mm -hmm. so to speak. Uh, I've seen parents now with one, two-year-old kids will set them down and give them the uh, cell phone and they play games. And they sit there quietly for hours on hours and hours playing mm -hmm. games, you know. So it's just changed uh, our way of living. Absolutely. Coach, when you get inducted to Naismith, uh, Hall of Fame. First of all, for people who are not sports fans, tell us what that is. Dr. James Naismith, and when I, and when I was in high school, a freshman, my first assignment in my uh, physical ed class, PE class, was to do a research paper on Dr. James Naismith. No. Dr. <laughs> yes. Dr. James Naismith is the one that invented basketball. He invented basketball by taking a regular peach basket, nailing it up against the wall, and you had to throw the ball in, and you had to climb a ladder to go up and get the ball out of the... Uh, peach basket. And it has evolved from that, Dr. James Naismith, to where it is today. Now we're flying to Springfield, Massachusetts. That's where he invented the game, and that's where the uh, Naismith Hall of Spain is located. And I've had the pleasure of going up there. Uh, I took my family up there on vacation one year to, to uh, Springfield, never knowing that I would go back. <laughs> right, as an inductee. As an inductee, that's correct. And so when you think about that, you think about the boy who did his first report That's correct. on Dr. Naismith, That's and right. now you are That's right. being honored. But, you know, the gravity of it, uh, you'd have to understand, you know, football has a football hall of fame, baseball has a, but basketball, NBA basketball, college basketball, high school basketball, A, has one umbrella under Dr. James Naismith. So to get to that point, you could be in the high school hall of fame, you could be in the NBA hall of fame, you can be in the AAU Hall of Fame. But all of us are headed towards that umbrella of the Naismith Hall of Fame. Right. So you're talking about the likes of uh, Bill Russell, uh, Larry Bird, uh, Michael Jordan, uh, you know, guys of that nature, and also major college coach Roy Williams, uh, John Wooten. So to be mentioned in the same breath as those guys is just mind-boggling. Did you ever think it would happen for you? No, I did not. And the reason I didn't, because very few high school coaches make it to that level. College coach, NBA coaches, college coaches, but very few high school coaches. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm only the fourth high school coach to be inducted. And that's an honor in itself into the Naismith Hall of Fame. So when you get that call, what's that moment like? Unbelievable. That happened on April the 1st. <laughs> <laughs> April 1st? April the 1st is when I Did you think that it call. was a joke? Well, I... I, I mean, kind of? Yes, yes, yes. And... Uh, Who calls you? Uh, CEO. Uh, I, I forgot his name, but I don't know why I did, but should, but he, he called me and he, he Where said... Where were you at? I was at the gym. I was at the gym doing some little uh, cleanup, you know, the little things I had to do around the gym. But they did tell me, if you are inducted, be near the phone from 11 o'clock to 1 o'clock on April the 1st. And I didn't even think about it before it being April Fool's Day, but then, I, then I, when the phone rang, I thought about it. I said, man, this could be a prank, you know? So I told him if I answered the phone, and he said, uh, this is, uh, you know, so-and-so, uh, so-and-so, and I'm calling to inform you that you have been inducted. You will be a member of the 2024 class of the Naismith Hall of Fame. What do you say? <laughs> didn't say I was speechless, really. I was speechless. What could I say? You know, and as we proceed to talk and he told me all this and that, and he said, the official announcement will not be made until 
that Saturday during the uh, semifinals of the Final Four. So they flew Woo me out. Yeah. <laughs> it so gets do not, even better. He said, don't <laughs> mention it to anyone oh. other than your wife and close family. So I'm about to explode yeah. trying to keep all of this stuff in, you know. But sure enough, uh, matter of fact, uh, they flew us out to uh, uh, Arizona. Phoenix, Arizona mm -hmm. that Saturday. Well, we flew out that Thursday, and they had a ceremony. It's like a pre-ceremony where they, uh, we had to measure for our jackets. We had to measure for our champ, uh, in a uh, Naismith uh, rings. Right. And at that dinner, I, was, I didn't know who else was in, in Who was there? Well, Vince Carter. He's in the 2024 class. Chauncey Billups. Okay, Michael Cooper, who played with the Lakers. Cooper Loop. <laughs> yes, he was there. And, of course, uh, Doug Collins. Mm -hmm. He's going in. And Jerry West, uh, which is the LA logo. L.A. Lakers. And, you know, he's a logo for the NBA. Wow. He was, he's inducted. This will be his third time being inducted. Really? He's going in this time as a contributor. So he's, he's going in as a, a, a player, a general manager, and now as a contributor. Are you in awe? In that yes, moment. but uh, he wasn't there because he was ill at the time. But yes, I was in awe. I mean, you got Vince Carter, the guy who could jump to touch the top of the yeah, gym. Yeah. Uh, Chauncey Billup, great point guard, and then of course Michael Cooper with the Showtime Lakers. Showtime. So, uh, that's right. So uh, it was just a great experience. I felt kind of leery at first. Why? Being that I'm a high school coach. Mm -hmm. Hey, these guys, these are big time. I mean, nobody even <laughs> Charles Smith, you know. Uh, but once I got there, those guys kind of gravitated towards me because they felt that, that I represented their high school coach. Yeah. And you know, all, most of all players have a great feeling for their high school coach. Because none of that happens without high school. That's correct. Right? That's correct. So you don't get to the next level right. without high school. So, so it's really saw, apropos. Yeah, that's right. So they saw a fulfillment for their high school mm -hmm. coach in me. So they were very uh, embraced me. Uh, we talked, uh, you know, and they told me stories about their high school coach, and they wanted to know about my coaching. How do I coach? What's my approach to coaching? And mm -hmm. and uh, how many the kids have I coached? Any NBA guys? Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, how many have there been? I've I've been I've been able to coach two. Wow, Paul Thompson. And that and, shows you just how small the percentage is. That's correct. That's of correct. those kids that will go from collegiate to that's the next correct. to that's the correct. next level. And so what was it like uh, sitting on that set at ESPN? <laughs> I mean, because that, if you're a sports fan, you, yes. you understand the gravity of that. Right. That was a total surprise. Now, I knew they had an outline of everything we was going to do. But when, I, when they said ESPN, I just uh -huh. thought we were going to, you know, they were just going to, you know, pan. You know, we stand there. We was holding our jerseys up. You know, they gave us a uh, jersey and with our name on it, and with 24, meaning that we was a member of the 2024 class. So I just thought that's all they was going to do. But then I had to come up on stage and, and do an interview, and uh, that, was, uh, that was really, really something. Coach, what do you want your legacy, you know, out of all of this, and you're not done? What do you, what do you want your legacy to be? Well, the main thing is that... Uh, I tried to help kids, you know, and, 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 and that's what I've really been all about, uh, trying to move st students, not just basketball players, but move students to another level. And I, we could be here all day talking about the success, uh, success stories mm -hmm. from uh, vice president of Fortune 500 companies to lawyers, doctors, uh, doctors over emergency rooms in charge of emergency rooms. We can talk about inventors, mm -hmm. I've had guys who have invented, uh, they were electrical engineers who mm -hmm. have invented, uh, you know, certain apparatus. Uh, but that's the, the, the main thing. Now, have they all been success? No. But I have been there for those that have fallen through the cracks also. Mm -hmm. You know, I've been there for them also. Coach Smith, you know what, uh, we just are always in awe when you give us the time uh, to Thank sit you. at your feet and Thank your accomplishments are, are, are too immense for us to even really just drill down into within this hour. Mm -hmm. But we just can't say thank you enough for your thank heart you. and building young men and thank teaching you. them how to be men beyond 
beyond sport. Thank you. And uh, may God continue to bless your years, your mind, your health. And uh, we just, <laughs> every time we sit here, we say we can't wait to see what's next. Thank you. Thank but we you. can't wait to see what's next. But I am working on an, another documentary. Okay. And uh, it'll be out, uh, hopefully we can get it out for Christmas. We're working on it now. Uh, Kale Bonton is working on a, a second documentary. Awesome. Uh, in, which is going to cover my the, just the basketball part of my life. Absolutely, and we're just happy to know that it's all being documented, and we can't wait to talk to you when you get back. <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm excited about going up there. We're excited for right. you. Thank, Thank you, Coach. You. Thank you so much for having me. Indeed. Hey, everybody, stay on point. We're back right after this.